Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today's video, we're going to be discussing the Brooklyn Nets, kind of what I'm seeing out of them right now. They are currently the 10th seed out in the East at a 5-6 and six record. They got off to a hot start, have cooled down quite a bit. They've got a few things going on off the court as well. So those are some things to monitor. Uh, but before we jump into that, I just want to remind each and every one of you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And here we go into the video. So the Brooklyn Nets at this point are 5-6. and six. Let's go look at their games, who they've uh, won and lost against, obviously, dominant wins to start the season. Then the, a surprise loss to the Hornets, uh, a surprise loss to the Grizzlies, I believe. No Kevin Durant in this game. Uh, a close win over the Hawks, and then a loss the following uh, game against the Atlanta Hawks. A uh, loss to the Wizards, that was surprising. I believe there was no Russell Westbrook in that game. Uh, a dominant win over the Utah Jazz, a nice win over the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, that was without Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving. And then a loss again to the Grizzlies. Again, no Katie or Kyrie. And then a loss to the Thunder, even with Kevin Durant playing last night. That's kind of the surprising thing about this, is even with Kevin Durant playing, they are losing some games to teams that you wouldn't expect them to. Uh, for example, the Atlanta Hawks earlier, the Oklahoma City Thunder again yesterday. And that's uh, one of the problems with the Brooklyn Nets is you're just not really sure what you're going to get uh, on a night-to-night -night basis. This is something I've been a little hesitant of when I was picking them uh, to make the Eastern Conference Finals is I was looking at their team and on paper, their team's really great. They're missing Spencer Dinwiddie right now with that ACL injury. Obviously, I hope he can come back healthy for them. But ultimately, the bigger problem there is going to be uh, whether or not they can get uh, dominant play out of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's been out now uh, with personal reasons and I'm assuming it has to stem from the capital. That was my thought. Uh, obviously, the raid on the Capitol, we're not going to get into that here. This is not the time or the place, but that probably did affect him. And for Kyrie Irving, uh, it seemed like that was the reason why he'd been out, missed three straight games for personal reasons. However, video surfaced today of him at a birthday party, maskless, uh, dancing with a whole bunch of people. The NBA is expected to review that. Uh, and I do not think he will be allowed to rejoin the Brooklyn Nets this week, which means he's going to miss even more games. And the Nets, you know, I'm not worried about them long term. The Miami Heat, when they added Bosch and LeBron with Wade in 2010, 2011, they started that season nine and eight. So it's not like teams come out firing, especially when they've got all these new pieces that are playing together for the first time. However, I would have hoped for the Nets to look a little bit better at the start of the season. They are only five and six. I think another big thing is they need to be playing uh, to get that chemistry on the floor together. I think come playoff time, it's going to be really important to have those reps together on the floor, closing out games. If Kyrie Irving is not there, they're not really able to do that. Obviously with Dinwiddie out as well now, uh, that backcourt is very thin. It's going to be a lot of Karis LeVert. I'll probably see some Chris Chioza uh, and the likes. It's just going to be a really thinned out Nets roster right now with Kyrie Irving's absence from the team. Obviously, Kevin Durant had missed some games due to health and safety protocols. He is back now for the Brooklyn Nets. That is at least good that he's able to get these reps. But that team needs to uh, all in all come together, play together a little bit more, gel as a team, find that team chemistry, because come trade deadline, that team might need to make a move or two. But without the chemistry, without seeing the team all together, you won't really be able to find out what piece that is that you want to uh, upgrade maybe or move out the door to get better. And right now at this point, the Nets are just a little rocky. Uh, the roster, obviously, very talented here. You look at this, this was a, a team that not a lot of people are going to be able to deal with uh, when they're healthy. Obviously, Shamit came in as the shooter. Torian Prince has been playing well this year. Joe Harris uh, put up 30 the other night. Uh, the front court is very filled out right now. The, the back court, though, with Dinwiddie out, Kyrie out, leaves it to Chioza, Shamit, who they have listed as a point guard. That is not what he is. Uh, Tyler Johnson, I don't even believe he's played much this year at all. Uh, that's just really looking at this team. They're pretty thin when Kyrie and Dimity are out, obviously two of their top seven players. And for Brooklyn, it's going to be really important not only to have that longevity of playing together, but also that depth come playoff time. They need Kyrie Irving back uh, to keep some of their guys fresh uh, come playoff time. They're going to be one of the deeper teams. You look at this top line right here. This is seven deep already. You could throw Jeff Green in there. He's playoff minute guy. Uh, Landry Shaman's a guy you could give playoff minutes to, Torian Princes as well. That, that's about 10 guys that they could go uh, deep into their bench with. I'm sure Steve Nash will not do that. I'm sure he'll coach similar to D'Antoni and go about an eight-man rotation in the first round, maybe even cut it down to a seven-man rotation in later series. 
But just looking at this team, there's a lot of different uh, avenues they could go. I'm not too worried about them long-term, but right now I think that uh, fans of the Brooklyn Nets should be a little cautious. Kyrie Irving is the type of guy that has had issues in the past, you know, putting it there mentally. He's uh, an unbelievable talent, has so much skill on the floor, but he's a little flaky off the court. I'm hoping for his sake, he can get it figured out and for the Brooklyn Nets sake, as well as Kevin Durant. He's a guy who obviously listens to the media quite a bit, uh, had his burner account incident a few years ago. The Brooklyn Nets are going to have to figure this out because I think off the court, uh, some things could start to pile up on them. On the court, they have all the talent in the world. I think that they should be considered one of the favorites for the NBA title. But the off the court issues are something I'm looking at. They don't really have a true leader here as well in the second unit. A lot of these guys are their own dude. Don't really take on something for the team. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, we're going to have to take a little bit of that. Kyrie now has absence, but it's Kevin Durant in a tough situation to have to try and figure that out. Uh, but I think that uh, when it all is said and done, their talent will reign over some of the issues they're having right now. But that is something to monitor as we continue throughout the NBA season. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.